Okay, it's at 1278 and 693. Uh. Okay. Changes. Hopefully that absorbs the new constant values. Uh... Okay, that's not right. Move way down here and try something simpler. Oh, 620 and 650, it says, are the dimensions. Um, that's not correct. Since so using the old code, I need to redeploy. Okay, that's good enough. So, one second. I'll get this going. Um, well, I have some confidence in um, what my inputs are. need as many debug statements. Okay, let's deploy code. And test it out. Um, move, E5, E5. Well, that's not perfect at all. Um, I don't understand why it's so... Oh, goodness. So we're saying that if I'm inside this box, then my cursor position is relative to the box now, or something. Um, I did not expect that. And what's worse, apparently my cursor's stuck here. Um, okay. Still going to need a little bit of advanced debugging tricks here then. Um, let's first debug this, trap the cursor inside the window, and see, um, what are my cursor locations again? So here, if I say, well, I forgot to redeploy the code. Redeploy. Eight eighty seven six sixty nine. If we stick it in this corner. Okay. Um 
Now, at least there's got to be some way I can get control over this. So, DOS box, trap cursor. Box disable tra cursor trapping. Um, yeah, how do I not hide the cursor while I'm playing this game? Got to be some way to make this work, right? <sighs> Apparently. When operating in DOSBox, I can't detect the actual cursor location. Um, Okay, so I guess this means that I have to resort to using the keys. Because um, I can't rely on the cursor. That's going to be fun. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Hmm. Is there any key sequence that reliably sticks the cursor somewhere? Reliably. I don't know. Um. I mean, I could always make this an exercise where you have to make sure that this is on a valid location. Okay. Yeah, I think I need to just decide... I'm going to start the cursor on 5-5. Five five. Um, yeah, I got made progress in the fact that um, I discovered that I can't detect where the cursor is located. Um, meaning I need to, instead of using the robot class, I need to like use key presses to move um, the cursor. And this is a DOS game, and it does support... Yeah, using keys to move it. Um, but yeah, I discovered that there's no way for me to detect the virtual cursor location inside the window. Um, <laughs> uh, because um, this isn't a real cursor. Like, it, Windows has a cursor, and whatever environment you run the game in also has its own cursor. And I don't have visibility to um, that cursor from within Java. 
So unless I feel like modding um, the environment that runs the game, uh, that's probably not worth it. I need to uh, just relay key presses instead of um, relaying mouse gestures. It's probably easier to send virtual key presses uh, to move it than it is to try to tell it find where the cursor is within this whole thing because this isn't the real Windows cursor. Um, the real Windows cursor is something separate. Um, uh, how do I demonstrate this? Suppose I need a monitor capture to show it. Um, yeah, no, this... I tried the web version, did not work. In, I, in the web version, it's all flash-driven and such. That doesn't work. Um, so, um, so I got this running in DOSBox. Uh, and let's see. Really? It's really going to make my window look like this. That's so ridiculous. Uh, how do I show this, though? Like, how else can I show this? Um, let's see, can I do it like... No, that's the wrong thing. Can I do it like this? Um... Oh yeah, yeah, you guys can see this. So you see there's this cursor and that cursor. This is the actual Windows cursor. When I click on the window, my cursor moves around. When I control F10 to exit, my cursors move back. But doing this kind of translation, um, it's seriously non-trivial. Um, whereas I think sending keystrokes into the window might be a little bit easier. Yeah. No worries. I'm just glad to have learned what I learned here. Um, it's enlightening, because I never would have imagined this in the first place. Um, imagined that uh, the environment would present such a problem. And now it's pretty obvious in hindsight, but I had to go this far to learn that, so... Um, so that's going to be fun to figure out how do I uh, relay keystrokes. Let's see, what was my last code change? Let's get NetBeans back up here. Um, Event VK right. Okay, so I'm going to redeploy. And now every time a move happens, it's going to press the right arrow key. Uh, so, this shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, apparently I've done something wrong. Oh, I forgot to, like, have a way to release the key. Um, that's hilarious, isn't it? <laughs> okay. That's very cute. Um, let's see, was it X to kill it? Okay. Um. I guess I have to have a key release action or something. Key press. Uh, what are my key functions? Key press and key release.
Okay, we'll try that again. Because we only need it to press the key once. Obviously, it's able to press the key. It's definitely mastered that. Um, okay, let's put our cursor back up here. Okay, I wasn't watching. Obviously, move the cursor twice. Very good. All right. Uh, now the tricky part is remembering where the cursor's at each time it tries to move. Um, So, yeah, key press and key release do work. Um, this detect cursor location stuff is not necessary anymore. Um, so, let me see. Uh, DOS box. Java detect cursor <laughs> location. I mean, this is the thing I was saying wasn't doable a minute ago. Um, Yeah, so I'm just going to have to rely on the cursor being in a good spot in the first place. Um, um, or I'm just going to have to add a command that says where the cursor is located. Um, Oh, right, I still need to introduce the click. That still has to be done. Unless I... If I remember right, um, it's a space bar that allows you to activate a piece, right? Yeah. So space bar is good enough. And since I'm relaying keystrokes anyway, we're going to stick with space bar. Um... tricky part is getting um, the cursor to move to the right spot. Um. <sighs> da, da, da. Hang on.
Okay. Um, oh, X and Y apparently, if I remember right, are... See, this is why you have to choose your abstractions wisely. Um, yeah, I would have put this abstraction just a little bit further. Although this is called click. Um, so, this is actually a decent abstraction. Um, that's actually really good. So I don't want to click, I want to key press. Uh, I want to click there, I want to key press here also. Um, I'm gonna take this. True, we're going to execute the key pressing stuff, or else we're going to do it with the mouse. Uh, why is this all indented before I touched it? Um, oh. It was indented like that. Okay. I prefer this a little bit. Um, on stream. Still code is on stream. That's good. It's all good. We're all still here. Coding is tremendously boring to watch. Um, X1 and Y1 are defined as what? Okay, so they're all... Ugh. Fun, fun, fun. Um, these are positioned from 0, 0, which is in the upper right. Um, Plus one over two. And dy. Uh, okay, so uh, four. Say while Let's 
squared over is zero. Nope, nope, no. So four. First we're gonna check, is dx I'm gonna switch dx. This is the ultimately the most compact way to write it. Um, I'll switch to parts in enumeration. If dx is greater than zero, do the following. Else, if dx is less than zero, do the following. Um, Same thing for y. Um, go down and up. And dx and dy are distance from 5, 5, and all that stuff. Yeah, I need to introduce a routine that does all this. Um, since I'm introducing new routines, hot code swapping won't work anyway. Um, I need to reset my window position and stuff. better ways to do that, but don't need to be using int <laughs> for that. Um, or this doesn't need to be int.
Wait, where are all these defined? Oh, right. Okay, fine. Uh, where's the dilemma here? Okay, I'm actually going to need uh, my output panel to tell me what I'm doing wrong. Um, where'd it go? Output. No, that's not it. Um, Action items. Okay, that doesn't really tell me much, though. Um. Possible conversion. Okay. Apparently to do differences I need to cast the result. Well, that's not it. That's the dilemma. Possible lossy conversion. I have to find this to tell me where the lossy conversion happens. Uh, Apparently that's necessary. Um, I guess this is why people usually don't code in this style. Um, I'm not sure we're using the invert method anyway. Java does all math as integers, and so uh, to do that sort of thing, you have to cast um, results. appear to have entered some kind of weird mode with my cursor. I've entered rectangle mode accidentally, that's the deal. Um, so, there we go. Really, I should use enumerated types for all this stuff, but who cares? Um, pressing things one at a time. So, new chess move. Oh, because I got rid of invert, which is not used anymore. Yeah, that's all good. Uh, to string. Yeah, this should have an annotation. Um, now chess move here. Uh, 
Um, Hmm. So, yeah. We already see what kind of trouble um, we've gotten into with that. So, here, this gets an absolute position. Index at. <laughs> well, okay. Indexed at A9. But that's okay, because we at least understand how it works. Um. Move chess move, if it's legal. Okay, so that's parse move. Tempting move, make move, make move. Um, yeah, X and Y. I'm going to rename these to things that actually make sense. Um, column 1. Row 1. Column 2. Row 2. I don't like undef either, but whatever. Um, and then we need to do the opposite here. Um, or move it, move the cursor back to the center when we're done. Um, how did I mess this up? Missing a parentheses there. There we go. Actually, yeah, I should just move it back to zero zero at the start and end of each move. Um, that's a lot easier than what I'm doing. And just assume it starts at zero, zero. Um, yeah, move cursor, move dot column one, move dot row one. Um, and then negate that. I don't know. There is something nice about it centralizing when we're done.
something even nicer. Well, um, yeah, I'm just going to keep this as simple as possible. Move.column1, move.row1. Oh, okay, here's the other thing. The thing I've been forgetting the whole time is that... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so click is something that I actually want to... Well... Okay, screw it. I'm not using that click. Um, I still need a, an abstraction that takes a cursor, puts it to a square, and activates it. Um, the abstraction should be called make move. Um, so here we go. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm conflicted here. So conflicted. Um, okay, well, this appears to be where we're doing some math. Uh, wow, this is... Coming up with an abstraction that leaves all the mouse stuff as is, is messy. Um, short dx1 uh, Hey. So it's this. This is uh, me trying to get a chess program working. Um, laser chess. Oh. Through Twitch API. <laughs> oh, God. It's going pretty well. Oh. Um, Cursor. Yeah, it was column base. Yeah, column then row. Oh, this is move dot column one. Yeah, I think here's how we're gonna make it work. Press the key. Negate that. Negate that. Oh. <laughs> Because I'm negating it, I have to typecast each argument. Because you know, you never know what's going to happen with these data types. Um, okay, I need to do likewise for. Column two, row two. Um, that'll do, I suppose. 
Um, in the loop, yeah. Okay, and of course as I look at it now, I see there's a cleaner way to do it. Yeah, you could say that. Here's the cleaner way to do it. Once less than zero, keep incrementing. So when you say Twitch API. Yeah. Does that mean like the IRC channel? Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> All that stuff. So someone has a generalized bot for that or what? Yeah, there's hundreds of bots out there. I picked one. So you're doing Twitch plays laser chess? Yeah, why not? Right? Yeah. Hopefully I got my down and up correct. Um, which one do I want to be down and which one do I want to be up? Uh, yeah, I think increasing Y here refers to this. But we'll find out soon enough if I got that wrong. Um, move cursor. Oh, and I have no delay, because... Right, delay is a... It's a robot function. We don't have that available. Okay. I mean, this is going to just fly by. Um... Java, key press delay. Delays between key presses. How do I do this? I don't want to put in thread.sleep, but maybe that's the only way to do it. Um, yeah, but I'm not writing my own how do I do a programmatic uh, key press delay? Oh, I can use the robot class to do key presses. Okay, so. What's this mouse move? Oh, key press is done through the robot anyhow. Somehow. Oh, because I'm extending robot. That's how. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. Um, see, I could delay if I want to. And I do. Um... Got a magic number fifty. Yeah. Wait, just 
delay take an int or some other? It takes an int. Auto delay. Auto delay equals zero. Um, yeah, we're just gonna set auto delay. no reason I should be writing my own delay code. Um, there. 50 milliseconds after um, each said it's chess time not this game it's the other thing this, uh, this has gone so long that um, well let me just direct you to what's going next um, we'll get back to this later but I'll in the meantime pass this along to our next host um, so thanks for watching